Pua Pau. This is Kaiu Pua Fife once again with the Kawani Foundation bringing you another segment of Voices of Truth, one on one with Hawaii's future. Now we're up in the uh, in the uh, forest area above Makiki, and we're very pleased to have with us today Noe Lani, uh, Goodyear Kaiu Pua. Noe Lani, aloha. Aloha. And welcome to Voices of Truth. And we are happy that you welcomed us here. Um, because of the, I know the study, stunning um, uh, visual here of this, this site, maybe you could just start off by telling us where we are, telling our, our viewers sure. where we are. Yeah, we're um, here on the campus of Halau Kumana New Century Public Charter School. Mm -hmm. um, this is a campus that we've been on now, the school has been on now for a couple of years. Like many of the charter schools, we've kind of, we're pushed around Evolved, from year to uh, year. Yeah. Um, but this has been our uh, permanent home, we hope permanent, mm -hmm. um, for the last few years. Mm -hmm. And so we're right between the two um, main host communities of Halau Kumana. Um, on this side, Mauna Laha, and then on that side, um, Papakolea, Anianiku, Kewalo, Kalawahine. And these are the two areas that you draw your... They school were, population from. Yeah, they're the two uh, main target areas for the school, although the students actually come from all over the Wherever. island. Wherever. Yeah. Um, the, tr the charter school enrollment is uh, kind of unusual, uh, the way it, it occurs, huh? How, did, how does that take yeah, place? Yeah, um, well, for Halau Kumana, we really started this school about 10 years ago, targeting, you know, an urban Hawaiian population. So mm. knowing that there are communities in rural areas where there are large Hawaiian communities. Right. The, the Hawaiian communities here in Honolulu are often overlooked because they're sort of tend to be dispersed or, you know, outnumbered by other folks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, we targeted, you know, these Hawaiian communities here. And of course, there are Hawaiians living throughout all parts of Honolulu from Moana Lua to Mauna Lua. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also found that many students are coming from all over the islands because there aren't or from all over this island. Um, because they want a Hawaiian cultural foundation as far as their education goes. What, what, what happens with the transportation um, for those people who come we from? We actually have a bus service that goes out to the west side. Mm -hmm. So we have several families that come out from the Waianae coast. And, um, that's a major commitment. Halau Kumana. Yeah, major it is a major commitment. commitment but yeah. um, you know, that's the sacrifice and commitment that many families Ohana are willing to make. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we've been really fortunate. This particular part of the campus is called Opu. It's um, the pico where protocol, opening protocol and closing protocol happens. So mm -hmm. all the students and teachers gather um, at the beginning and ending of the day to do our oli and announcements and all of those kinds of things. What um, grades, what grades does uh, Halau Kumana? Halau Kumana is a secondary school, so it goes from 6th grade to 12th grade. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and so every um, morning you, the entire... The entire um, school gathers right here. here. Yeah. yeah, and so it's really the pico because the um, kua'ana or the high school level is below us. That's where we're going to go, I think, in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then the kaikaina or the middle school has another um, set of classrooms that are up beyond oh, where we up? can see right here. Oh, yeah. I see. So there's more. So they're kind of uh, separated yeah. by, the, by the age groupings. Yeah. Then, huh? mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, we saw some of the the buses backing up, I guess having already, well, it's, it's vacation time, isn't it? It's vacation time right now, so the kids aren't around. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, it's certainly a beautiful setting. I think uh, people can probably hear the, uh, the stream alongside. Yeah. And that, that's got to have a calming effect on on some energetic young people, I would think. We're really happy to have this spot. The various um, places where Halau Kumana was located before, you know, we were fortunate to have been given the space, but um, the kids never really had room to spread out or really right. um, be able to run during their breaks. Um, mm -hmm. And so being next to a stream is, is amazing. Um, the park that's down below, you'll see, was actually known for many years as being sort of a place where um, drug transactions would take place. People would kind yeah. of do that kind of party. Right. Um, when, when we first came in, um, all of the grasses over here were overgrown. You wouldn't believe the kinds of things that we found yeah. when we were clearing and yeah. cutting back. And then, of course, since then, um, the kids and teachers all really put in together to um, keep the campus 
looking like it is today and growing things. So you'll see down here as we um, get past where the car stalls are, mm -hmm. a mala of um, uwala that the canoe, the va'a project, um, recently planted. Mm -hmm. And then Sweet down below, mounds, yeah. yes, and then mm -hmm. um, down below, you know, you'll see all kinds of other um, plants that the different kumu and um, haman I have. I'm trying to imagine, uh, I mean, the way it's organized and orderly and cleaned up, I'm trying to imagine how this area was before I know a lot of hard work went into it. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, when you're starting up something, who, who gets involved in that early cleanup with is really heavy duty grunt work. Huh? Yeah. And, and well, you have such a disparate uh, school population from all over. You know, if you're within a single community, sometimes you can motivate, clean up things mm -hmm. pretty easily. Were you involved in the early, early on in this when this was uh, um, well, I've been first involved being developed? In Halau Kumana since the school was founded, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, you know, those other two, like I said, really spearheaded the campus. Um, but I was here doing the cleaning as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think for the, from the charter schools, we can on one hand, focus on the disparities of, you know, state funding and lack of provision of facilities, but we can mm -hmm. also really focus on the ways that all the different schools throughout Kapai Aina have allowed people to come together within the communities, the mm -hmm. grassroots, to show that we can make mm -hmm. amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. So um, over the years, over the last 10 years, we've just had, you know, thousands of um, people, family members, mm -hmm. community members, groups of folks, um, who have come to to lend their support because they're excited about yeah. the vision and what seems to me I remember some of these the the stream clearing and cleaning mm -hmm. seems like I saw some photos there, there was some big stuff that came out of that to clean up the stream yeah. too right yeah several trees were dropped I mean you can see these trees here with all um, that are hanging down and yeah. if you could imagine that throughout the whole right. um, campus that we see and then mm -hmm. tons of tall grass, kind of like that side yeah. of the stream. Yeah. Well, it's amazing how much work it, uh, it takes to uh, clear the place and then to keep it that way. Of course, once you start using it, it gets to be easier, but if there's a lag time, you know, between the initial cleanup and when you actually start to fully occupy it, sometimes things just go back so fast it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. One of the things, like I was mentioning with charter schools, um, that has been difficult is the um, inequitable funding that we're not given the same amount of yeah, funding. So yeah. the leaders are also responsible for helping to, you know, find addi additional sources of, of funding and making, um, the, making the school, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, feasible to, to run, um, as well as particularly our Po'okumu being the instructional leader, the cultural and academic leader of, mm -hmm. of the school. So A lot of responsibility. Yeah. I, I forget what the ratio is, but uh, compared to normal public school uh, student funding, it's like two thirds, huh? Or yeah, less. per pupil. Per pupil and, in the charter mm -hmm. school. And that so, doesn't take into account the f lack of facilities exactly, as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really you, an even greater disparity. You know, it's almost like uh, it's almost like someone saying, "Okay, you want to do this." Uh, here's very limited funding, very limited support. Let's see whether or not you really are serious yeah. about this. And, Actually, and I know that it's been thriving. Yeah, I mean, we've been also fortunate to have additional funding um, from, from different sources like Kamehameha mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. OHA is going to start funding mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. um, the charter schools. But I think really the, the main kind of um, meat is all of the mana and the energy that has really come from the communities and the families mm -hmm. and the teachers um, mm -hmm. themselves, you know, and, and all of the work that people put in many, many hours, often unpaid. Yeah. Um, well, in the positive energy, the, the increase in the negative indicator, the decrease in the negative indicators that, uh, you know, everyone kind of evaluates the success of an educational institution. Uh, I know that the charter schools are just amazingly uh, successful in taking students who were perhaps at risk or disinterested or not fully reaching their, you know, their capabilities that the charter yeah. schools have uh, I mean, we get really students of, of many different kinds of abilities and attitudes towards school. Some um, 
are students who have felt alienated in the mainstream public schools and some right. are students who have done incredibly well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really just about people who are committed to um, the perpetuation of Hawaiian culture mm -hmm. and, um, and also the realization that Hawaiian cultural knowledge is as rigorous and, you know, rich as mm -hmm. the, the sort of quote unquote Western, right. you know, academic right. knowledge. Right. Um, There's always a, a question about, uh, well, okay, so they get the language, they get the culture. What about, what about the science? What yeah. about, you know, those things that supposedly Western civilization thinks they have a, a monopoly on and, and the truth is there's Science and We've been doing science for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah, yep, here, here, hand, right here in the island. First hand island. interaction in the environment. Down here are the classrooms for the high school level. Mm -hmm. um, we started off with these being the only classrooms, really, and then just opened the upper middle school part mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the kids have lunch out here. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond the classrooms, there's an outdoor shower and um, then open field where they can. You know, play. You know, you mentioned uh, having lunch out here. Is there any kind of a food program set up, or does everyone bring their own, or what? Um, there is a food program, and actually, it's that's one of the major costs of the school. You know, mm -hmm. um, the one thing that is common in in our school and many others is that um, many of our students come from families that are eligible for free and reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. um, the, we operate the lunch program at a loss typically yeah. um, so that you know people the OPO can eat which is very important yeah. um, so and where, yeah, and where does the here. food come from is there a kitchen here or you no we, we contract in contract yeah, yeah. contract in I think yeah. the long-term vision you know would be for many of our schools to have the aina where we can be growing the food sure. to provide for right the um, the lunch program and beyond for mm -hmm. the families mm -hmm. you know so it, it can be a bigger um, a bigger community vision if we think about in Hawaii how dependent we are on imported food yeah. right we import the vast majority of our food mm -hmm. so when we talk about sovereignty and independence you know if mm -hmm. we really want to be able to enact and live that independence we're going to have to be able to feed ourselves and wean mm -hmm. ourselves from that dependency of um, mm -hmm. a foreign and corporate global that, uh, that food, food system. sovereignty thing. yeah food right. sovereignty yeah, Another which area. is basically just what our kupuna have been doing for mm -hmm. hundreds of generations is malama aina, you know, working mm -hmm. and feeding ourselves right and the from aina the land, right? Taking care of us. Yeah, so. So, how do, how do you, Noe Lane, Goodyear, Kaupu, how do you, how do you figure into this? How did you get into this situation? Um, you know, my, I think my work with Halau Kuman over the last 10 years, and I'm not here in any co official capacity anymore. Mm, I'm still mm. affiliated and support the school, right. um, but I'm not employed here anymore. Oh, I see. Um, but my work here has been part of a larger concern with um, education and particularly public education for mm -hmm. Hawaiians. Mm -hmm. um, you know, since the theft of our government in the late 1800s, mm -hmm. Hawaiians, Kanaka, have not had control of public education. Mm -hmm. So imagine since 1887, since the bayonet, um, cool. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to control the educational system that the vast majority of our young mm -hmm. people are in, right? And mm -hmm. that's um, clearly a, a racist and colonial situation, sure, right? When sure. you look at the DOE, it's kind of like a pyramid, right? Hawaiians make up the largest group at in the, the base, at the, the, base yeah. in the students, but as you move up that pyramid, mm -hmm less representation in the teachers, even less representation among principals and almost no yeah. representation at the um, higher levels in the DOE hierarchy and at the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been the case, like I said, since we lost um, control of our government. Yeah. Well, since it was forcibly taken from us, I shouldn't say we lost it, mm -hmm. it was forcibly taken from right. us, right? When I think back on the early years of envisioning Halau Kumana and some of the other schools like ours, we kind of, I think, saw it the purpose as twofold. One was to create an immediate pu'uhonua mm -hmm. for our young people who were mm -hmm. in a system that was alienating. It was like and, a crisis situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the other part of it was preparing a long term, okay, if eventually um, we're going to be able to enact our political sovereignty mm -hmm. again, we're mm -hmm. going to need to have a functioning school system. Sure. And so if we start doing and building that and practicing it now, mm -hmm. then we're ready, yeah. Mm -hmm. Better mm -hmm. to be makauka than really, yeah. than not. So it's it's not a, a quick jump. It's a a long journey. Yeah. 
and to prepare yourself along the way. So if you're not here officially any longer, what is it that really moves you? Uh, what are you uh, most passionate about today? Yourself? Today? Um, well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this uh, project that we're working on called the Mo'olelo Aloha'ina project that's mm -hmm. actually involved some um, of the staff and students at Halau Kumana in an mm -hmm. informal way. Um, as well as I work at the university now. Um, I teach in the indigenous politics uh, area, and so mm -hmm. it's, um, I've involved some of my students there. Mm -hmm. um, but the Mo'olalo Aloha Aina project is actually a project of a grassroots group called uh, MANA, Movement for Aloha no Ka Aina. It's an independence um, hui of people that um, believe in a similar um, group of values, including you know food sovereignty and mm -hmm. political independence, mm -hmm. um, appreciation of diverse genders and sexualities within our Lahui, mm -hmm. um, all of those kinds Open of... Open society. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the Mo'olalo Aloha Aina project that we've been working on is... Um, Which, you know, this goes all over the world. So some of the terminology that you're using with, that we're familiar with, some people in Europe or elsewhere might not understand, although they can get it from context, mm -hmm. but Mo'olalo Aloha Aina being defined as right. or interpreted as... Okay. It's um, the stories, yeah, the mo'olelo of love for the land. Okay. And so the idea of the story, it's an oral history project that is aiming to um, document some of these stories of activists who have struggled to protect the aina out of their aloha, out of their love for and connection to the aina. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we started to realize, I was kind of inspired by, you know, my work at Halau Kumana was that Young people were growing up um, not aware of some of the struggles that for those of us of an older generation mm -hmm. of, you know, of our ages would, mm -hmm. would think, oh, you never heard of Kalama Valley or the Waihole Waikane struggles or mm -hmm. Sand Island Sand evictions Island, yeah, or yeah. Makua or Kaho'olawe even, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they were growing up just kind of taking that for granted or not have, being that it's not being taught unaware, in yeah. regular school curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then knowing that some of our um, warriors who have participated in, in these struggles, um, you know, are getting older and it's a good mm -hmm. time yeah. to have, get their reflections mm -hmm. on, on um, what, what kinds of strategies they used, what mm -hmm. uh, motivated them to get involved in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so the project is to get young people involved in talking to uh, Maku and Kupuna mm -hmm. who have participated in sure. direct action struggle Implementing for Implementing the handoff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so they can get Ma'a. The mm -hmm. acronym of the project is Ma'a, yeah? Mo'olelo Aloha Aina. So oh, they yeah, can get yeah. Ma'a mm -hmm. to the fact that activism for Aloha Aina is part of our legacy as Kanaka. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the Kuleana. Huh? And part of our Kuleana, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so that's uh, what the project is about. It We do, kind of like you, we do uh, video interviews with uh, mm -hmm. folks who have been involved and then um, one of the things that we kind of learned from watching this YouTube generation, yeah. right, is that they like things in small bits. Right. So um, rather than have full length videos, we, we clip them mm -hmm. into sort of three, four minute segments. Bites. Yeah. yeah, bites. Right. So um, the project is actually now up online. We have our website up and going. Um, if you just Google Mo'olelo Aloha Aina, you can find um, the project and we started with um, interviewing some of the folks who were involved with uh, the first uh, landings on Kaho'olawe mm -hmm. as well as um, some folks who were involved with uh, Kalama Valley um, eviction protests and Waihole Waikane. So we're just really getting started with mm -hmm. um, that interviewing. I think what we're hoping in the long run is that it'll inspire people um, in whatever community they are in throughout the um, islands mm -hmm. to do the same mm -hmm. because really we're not just wanting to be one team interviewing all these people. Yeah. We really want other young people sure. to get involved um, and the way the site is set up any filmmaker or anyone with a camera can can do it post their video to YouTube or Vimeo and then we can just embed it in the mm -hmm. site mm -hmm. um, and that allows us when you go to the site you can really hopefully in the long term, the vision is you can see the scope of our struggle. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes we get 
um, embedded in our our one place, right. which is awesome. But we forget that there are all these people doing work, yeah. you know, across generations yeah. and across the islands. And, and that's so, really so important because um, it can be kind of a lonely situation if, yeah. you, if you're the only one. But the truth is, there people are everywhere are working at it. That's that's what our our uh, motivation is is to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, try to let everyone know there are good things happening. That's why we're here talking to you yeah. and many others, you know, uh, that there are good things happening. People are making things, good things happen in the various communities and the different disciplines, different yeah. areas of responsibility. And uh, our, our thing is if you're sitting at home watching us on TV, which we hope you are, <laughs> of course, uh, that you don't just sit there and watch the TV, that you get up and find your own responsibility Aye. and do your part for the society. Aye. So that's a, you know, one on one with Hawaii's future, and that's that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So the thing that's been so reassuring to me is the way younger generations yeah. are um, are picking up the cause, are educating themselves, mm -hmm. and getting involved. You're working at the university. You're teaching mm -hmm. at the university. And then this is a this is a side side project or function of that or this is it's kind of a it's more of a grassroots project. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of things that come along with doing research through the university. So mm -hmm. um, we wanted it to be generated by communities more than generated from sort of an institution. Yeah, um, and that was really important. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it started from that level but it has involved on a voluntary basis mm -hmm. you know students from the university teachers and students from halau kumana mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, young people from from other places well, that's terrific well it's it's very interesting thank you for meeting us up here and spending the time and telling us about you know the background on halau kumana but uh, just as importantly the, uh, what you're doing and uh, and and others you know, with your same direction and your same energy. We appreciate that very much. Uh, we have a long ways to go, but the thing that's reassuring if you're in touch with the younger people or with the educational institutions uh, is that we have some tremendous, tremendous resources. Mm -hmm. The kids are just soaking things oh, up, yeah. uh, you know, just like sponges. Yeah. So we're really appreciating it, and we want to thank you once again, Noi Lani. Thank you for coming. Thank you, and keep up the good work. And we'll be looking for some of the product, the video yeah. products of your, yeah. of your uh, project. And uh, we'd like to hope that you folks out there will be looking for it too. Uh, we'll run some banners with information, contact information, and websites and so forth for you to uh, check out uh, this project. Uh, Aloha. What is it? Malama Aloha Aina? The project? Yeah. Mo'olelo Aloha Aina. Mo'olelo Aloha Aina. Mo'olelo Aloha Aina. So once again, thank you very much. I'm Kaio Pua Fife with the Kwani Foundation. Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, a component of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Ahui ho. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.